In this A-level IEB biology video, we're going to be looking at the terms hydrophilic and hydrophobic, what the meaning of these terms are, and how you can tell if something is hydrophilic or hydrophobic. So to begin with, we're going to write a heading which is solubility in water. So the first word we're looking at is hydrophilic. Hydro meaning to do with water. File means loving, so effectively we're looking at water-loving substances. So what is the meaning of the term hydrophilic? Well, it means that some substances are attractive to water and therefore form intermolecular bonds with water molecules. So what are some examples of hydrophilic substances? Well, basically, polar molecules and ionic compounds are both hydrophilic. Now, polar molecules, remember, are slightly charged, and that's due to the atoms found within these molecules having different electronegativities. Now, examples of polar molecules, therefore, include water itself, ammonia, which is NH3, sulfur dioxide. So you've got a slight separation in charges here. Now, the reason why polar molecules and ionic compounds are hydrophilic is because these substances dissolve in water because the ions or molecules that they're made up of are more attracted to water than each other. So the polar molecules and ionic compounds have positive and negative charges which are attracted to the delta, so slightly negative, and delta positive, slightly positive ends of the water molecule. Make sure you watch my video on the properties of water molecules if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about here. It makes sense now to compare hydrophobic substances. So looking at the meaning of that word, We've obviously got hydro, so we're talking about water again. Phobic, if you have a phobia to spiders, you obviously hate them. So these are water-hating substances. Now, these are substances which are not attracted to water. Now, it doesn't mean that these substances are repelled by water. It just means that the water molecules are more tightly attracted to each other than the hydrophobic substance. So these substances, by definition, are insoluble in water. Now, our examples of hydrophobic substances include oils and fats, which hopefully you know, if you're trying to clean a greasy pan, fatty pan, in water, you'll notice that it really doesn't work very well, and that's because those oil droplets are hydrophobic, and other substances such as alkanes, including methane. Now, notice when we're looking at oils, fats, and methane, these are examples of non-polar substances. So if we just do a little bit of key highlighting, we know that hydrophilic substances are water-loving and that they tend to be polar molecules. Hydrophobic substances are water-hating and they are non-polar substances. So if you take nothing else away from this video, make sure you've absorbed that. Our explanation now, and that is remember that the water molecules in this case are more, more strongly attracted to each other than to the non-polar molecules of hydrophobic substances.